Gentlemen, here we are, second part of chapter four. There's been a radical shift. We are no longer with Mr. Gatsby at lunch. We are now with Jordan and Nick in the afternoon. Take a look at this. this we really got to be careful here. Okay, so Jordan is now in the tea garden at the plaza with Nick. That is a very nice place to have a cup of tea and hang out and chat, okay? So, this is right after he had his lunch with Gatsby. Remember, Jay told him, you're going to talk to Jordan this afternoon and she's going to tell you about all this, okay? And now Jordan is filling us in on what happened on an October day in 1917, okay? So this is Jordan relating to us something that happened five years earlier, okay? And it is what happened at Daisy Faye's house, okay? Daisy Faye was just 18, two years older than me, and by far the most popular of all the young girls in Louisville. Okay, let's do a little math. Daisy was 18 in 1917, so she must be about 22 now, okay? Jordan was two years younger than that, so Jordan must be about 20 years old right now. Okay, so they're in Louisville, and Daisy was the most popular of all the young girls in Louisville, and a big part of that is she was loaded, okay? Um, Daisy's rich. All right. So, when Jordan comes across her, she was sitting in a roadster with a lieutenant I had never seen before. They were so engrossed in each other that she didn't see me until I was five feet away. Okay. All right. So, the off, uh, so uh, Daisy asked Jordan to come on over and say hi. And this is when... Jordan realizes, like, oh, wow, that was Jay Gatsby. I didn't lay eyes on him again for four years. Even after I'd met him on Lying Island, I didn't realize it was the same man. Okay, wow, here's our connection then. Five years ago, Jay and Daisy knew each other. We need to find out, like, what's the nature of that relationship and what's going on there, but... Jordan has now just put this together. And, okay, so that was 1917. All right, Jordan doesn't see Daisy very often. Uh, the, art, the war happens. Okay, and she, uh, there's a little, you know, interesting stuff about her, her um, that uh, she wasn't in good... Uh, in good states with her family because she was running, she was thinking about running away. Uh, so, you know, her parents were really trying to keep a close eye on her. And then Daisy gets happy again. Okay, so let's look at the timeline. That was 1917, one year later, and then here we are by the next autumn. And in February, she was engaged, so we're now in 1920, okay? And she married Tom Buchanan of Chicago. And Jordan was one of the bridesmaids. All right. Tom gave her, I mean, look at the money he spent. Holy cow. A string of pearls valued at $350,000? I'm not even sure what that would be in today's money. A million and a half? Two million dollars in jewelry? I don't even know. I, I honestly don't even know. Okay. All right. So, Jordan, Daisy's bridesmaid, comes up to see her um, the night before the wedding, and Daisy is drunk. And interestingly, this is the first time she's been drunk. Remember, Nick said to us earlier that he hadn't been drunk much before, only once or twice before Tom got him drunk. So, anyway, Daisy is drunk as hell night before a wedding, and she grabs 
the string of pearls that she took out of her waste box basket. So she took that, you know, incredible jewelry and threw it away. And she says, give them back to whoever they belong to. Tell them Daisy's changed your mind. Say, Daisy's changed your mind, right? So she doesn't even really, she doesn't even say, give them back to Tom. It's almost like she doesn't even know who these belong to, but Tom's just the highest bidder, okay? So Daisy starts crying. Jordan gets the mother's maid and they lock the door. They put her in a cold bath. She's holding this letter that she has in there. And she takes the letter in a into the tub with her. The letter starts falling apart. So whatever this letter was, it dissolves in the bath. We don't know a lot about it right now, but she had a letter. And Daisy had this letter that made her not want to get married to Tom. But now, 5 o'clock the next day, she marries Tom Buchanan without so much as a shiver. And then they leave for the South Seas. The next time Jordan sees them, remember this is all being related through Jordan. Once again, guys, this is the way modernists do it. You never get the straight story. You get the story as it was told by somebody who's now telling it to somebody else, okay? All right, so apparently, you know, in Santa Barbara, Daisy's all head over heels for Tom, but Tom, Got in a car accident, and interestingly, it was written up in the paper because there was a girl with him in the car. She was one of the chambermaids in the hotel. This is probably one of our, this is our first example of Tom, you know, three months into his marriage, uh, already playing the field, okay? So... April, uh, in April, Daisy has a girl, they go to France, right? They're just kind of gallivanting all over, the, all over the world. Anyway, now we get back, now Jordan brings the story back to the present. Six weeks ago, remember when Jordan asked Jay, or Jordan asked Nick, hey, where do you live? And Nick says, oh, I live on West Egg. Oh, do you know Gatsby? And that's when Daisy's perked up. Remember, we didn't know why she was doing that. She says, what? Gatsby? What? Huh? And then, but now we know why. This was the Gatsby she used to know. And then, it was at that moment that Jordan connects it. Oh my gosh. The Gatsby on the West Egg is the same officer that was in the white car with her back when she was a young girl in Louisville. Okay. Oh my goodness. So, now, uh, Nick listens to all this and says, wow, what a strange coincidence that of all the places Gatsby could have gone, he ends up right across the way from Daisy. And Jordan says, oh, it wasn't a coincidence. He bought that house to be close to her. Okay? Now, this is extraordinary. Okay, Gatsby is asking through Jordan. Remember, Gatsby didn't ask Nick himself. He's asking through Jordan, will you invite Daisy to your house some afternoon and then let Gatsby come over? Wow, this is weird. So, Gatsby's waited five years, bought a mansion, but he just wants to... Like, come over when my cousin is at my house? What? This is all really weird. Okay? So, uh, he wants, uh, Gatsby wants Daisy to see his house. He wants her to see the mansion he's living in. He, uh, Jordan infers that Jay must have wanted Daisy to come over, and that's why he threw these big parties so she would come over. And he just began asking people at the parties, does anybody know Daisy? Anybody know Daisy? And of course, he finds someone who does. He finds Jay. Oh, excuse me, he finds Jordan. And so, all right. Wow. Quite a plot to get into the same room as Daisy. Jay has really hatched this quite extraordinary plot, OK? 
okay? All right. And Jordan kind of, or Nick kind of closes out this whole story with this one line. There's only the pursued, the pursuing, the busy, and the tired, all right? So it's almost like everybody's just chasing something. Everybody's just chasing some dream, some kind of happiness, right? Okay, and Jordan feels like Daisy ought to have something in her life. She hates Tom, and Tom hates her and sleeps with other women. But now here's another interesting thing. Nick asks, does she want to see Jay? And Jay said, uh, Jordan says Jay doesn't want her to know. She's not supposed to know about it. So, in a way, this is almost like an ambush, right? They're going to ambush Daisy with someone she hasn't seen in years at her cousin's house. Wow, quite an intricate plot. I hope it's okay that I slowed down and kind of made some sense of all of this because there's a lot of really important detail here. But amidst all that interesting detail, we finally get to something that matters to Nick. Unlike Gatsby and Tom Buchanan, I had no girl whose disembodied face floated along the dark cornices and blinding signs. And so I drew up the girl beside me, tightening my arms. Her wan, scornful mouth smiled. And so I drew her up again, closer this time to my face. All right, so it's time for A-C-T-I-O-N between Nick and Jordan. So, you know, I mean, think about this. The, you know, Nick has just found out he's part of this really weird, deceptive plot to get these two people together, even though one of them's his cousin that's married to another man, even though the man she's married to is having affairs with other women even though the man who wants to meet up with his cousin is somebody who is friends with the man who fixed the World Series and wears molars as cufflinks. Oh man, are we deep into the depravity and the emptiness and the vacuousness of the uber-rich. But Nick's response here is in a way to be kind of seduced to it by it, right? He tightens his arms around it. He draws her to him. Really interesting how he reacts here. Okay, so there we are. End of chapter four. Oh man, I cannot wait until Daisy is in Nick's house and Jay just like arrives. Are you kidding me? Here we go.